Okay, I think it's working now. It is. Okay. So I have several preps to work through before I put the limit of the Riemann sum together. I need this, I need this, and I need the function, and then I can put everything together. So I have three preps. Find delta x, find xi, find f of xi, and then I can put everything together. So number one is delta x, but that's clear. b minus a, 2 minus 0 divided by n. So this is 2 over n. Step two, I have to find xi. Okay, let's explain what this means. This is the interval between 0 and 2. I'm not going to graph the function here. We already have seen it four times. I want to divide this interval into n subintervals. n subintervals, yes. Okay. 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. 1, 2. So this is 2 over n. This with 2 over n. All of them. Each subinterval has a width. So this is the width, the base of each rectangle. So if I want, let's say, 1, 2, 3, x3, x3 equals 0 plus 1, 2, 3, delta x. x4 will be 0 plus 4, delta x. What will xi, when I get to xi, to the ith one, the general one, how do I write xi? Anyone? Zero plus i. Zero plus i delta x. In other words, i times two over n. Thank you very much. So this is two i over n. Two i over n. Step three, I have to find f of xi. Remember the function is x squared. So what does f of xi equal to? xi is this, and the function is x squared. So how do I find f of xi? What do I put inside? That's it, which is 4i squared over n squared. I have all my preps ready. Now I can write the limit of the Riemann sum. The exact area is the limit as n approaches infinity from the sum from i equals 1 through n from delta x 2 over n multiplied by 2, I'm sorry, 4, i squared over n squared. One more time. Delta x, it's right here, 2 over n. f of xi, I just calculated it. I have the sum from i equals 1 through n, and I have the limit. Now, one of the properties of the sigma or summation notation is that if there is a factor that is a constant that does not depend on i, it can go in front. So this is limit as n approaches infinity from 8 over n cubed, 8 over n cubed outside, the sum from i equals 1 through n of i squared. But this I know. I know what I need to replace it by. It's 
of this. It's the sum of i squared, which is n, n plus 1, to n plus 1 divided by 6. So this now is gone. It will be replaced by what it equals to. So limit as n approaches infinity of a over n cubed multiplied by n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 divided by 6. Now this is a piece of cake. Why? because we know how to calculate limits. So this goes away. 8 over 6 becomes 4 thirds and it will go in front. I simplify it by 2. Now limit as n approaches infinity. The denominator is only n squared. I will distribute 2n squared plus 2 plus 1, so it's plus 3n plus 1. Assuming I don't remember what I need to do here, from pre-calculus, but I know from calculus this is L'Hopital's rule, infinity over infinity. So this is 4 thirds, limit as n approaches infinity from 4n plus 3 over 2n. Again, it's infinity over infinity. So this is 4 thirds, limit as n approaches infinity from 4 divided by 2. So I'll simplify, it's 2, so this is 8 thirds. And this is absolute exact. We used an infinite number of subintervals. So now, this was the approximation. 8 divided by 3 is 2.6666666. Quite good. With only 4. So we will always approximate when we cannot determine this. We can always come up with a good estimate. But this is how the limit of the Riemann sum works. So we took the preps. We need these three steps first before we put everything together because that, then the calculations become more cumbersome. So always determine the, the preps put it together, take the constant out. We're gonna have look at more difficult examples. This was the easiest possible. Um, and then we replaced what we know, the sum of i squared from i equals one to n. And this was just a rational function to find its limit. Any